I'd like to talk to you about a, a story that I wrote called The Magic of Both Warriors. My main character in the story is James Parrish. And uh, he had something happen at six years old that changed him. He walked in on a situation and his uncle, who was very drunk, grabbed him by a hand and started wailing on him. Something entered James while he was being beaten and it knocks his lights out. It, it puts him unconscious and he goes limp in his uncle's hand and the uncle thinks he's killed him. This most likely saved his life because he wakes up on the bed the next morning and he's surprised that he's not hurting because of the beating. He's also surprised because everything has color. Everything in his room is radiating incredible colors and there's someone standing in the corner of the room that isn't really there. But he sees things that nobody else can see and each time he shares things from this age, he is ridiculed and he is laughed at. You can only imagine how a six-year-old would feel in this situation. Well, he's 16 years old when the story opens and the same presence that entered him when his uncle was beating him is in him again. Only this time, there's a nun who is abusing him. He discovers some sort of an ability that he doesn't quite grasp when he makes the nun think she was stung by a bee. He's in a different frame of mind when he gets home. And his buddy is waiting for him up the road from his home. And there is a little girl looking out the window who cannot possibly be in the house. Well, in this different frame of mind, they go up and uh, they discover that there's nobody in the house. And James is almost nauseous because when he walks into the room that the little girl appeared in, he gets this wave of bizarre energy. It just, it makes him feel very ill very quickly. Well, his buddy leaves. And he is sitting on the living room couch when something exits the fireplace. It is two foot tall, it has floppy ears, and it's very dark. And it has what looks like a scimitar in its hand. Well, the events go on, and in this altered state, he grabs a tarp, and he grabs a flashlight, and he actually goes into the fireplace, where a blast of cold air hits his cheek. This frightens him. It kind of amazes him because there's something paranormal going on here. So he goes up to the only people in the world he can share this bizarre stuff with, Lucky and Denise. And Denise suggests that he could have a dimensional doorway somewhere beneath the house. Well, this leads James into a serious investigation, and about a month later, he discovers a way to open the trap door. Well, this doesn't just thrill him, this excites him to the point that he cannot not go into the place. But Denise insists that they get some cold weather gear because it is so cold coming out of that trap door. And some other gear before they even enter, including radios, to where she can actually let them back out of the fireplace when they return. So Lucky and James go into the fireplace 
and down into this chute, which is extremely long drop into a tunnel that is deep below his house. They have no idea where it came from or why it's even there. This leads to an adventure that nearly cost them their lives right off the bat. And it is so fastly driven and they are fighting to survive, basically. It's an epic fantasy and every reader has been thrilled by it because it goes very fast. But it is something that I'm proud of and I hope that you enjoy called The Magic of Floria, and it will soon be available. It is available on Amazon right now, but it's being republished by a publisher that I will announce later on in time. Thank you for listening.